commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Hasu League from BSL Season 13. This is Group D. We got Arthur Fleck going up against Sheep. Arthur Fleck was Obi-Wan from the previous match. They actually switched names in between these games, perhaps uh, from when they were played. He's going to be starting as the blue, Midnight Blue Terran at the 12... Can I do the color swap? I'm going to color swap. He's going to be the red Terran at the 12 o'clock location, bottom right-hand corner. We have Sheep starting as the green Zerg in the bottom right. Almost winning the match uh, previously versus Exit in the initial games. This is on Aztec. Aztec reminds me a lot of Tau Cross, uh, except you've got this inverted ramp here and then kind of leading out. I don't know why it reminds me of Tau Cross. Maybe because it's just a three-player map. Um, maybe because it's just got big drop areas that you can see there's just a lot of surface area where you can put in drops. But really the critical feature here is, is that at the natural expansion, if you end up losing position on the natural expansion, dealing with this inverted ramp can be a lot of trouble. Um, also feel like it's a decent map for Mutalisk play because you can see where you can just kind of float back over those river doodads depending on what expansion you're dealing with. Uh, this is the nearby three o'clock base where it's got a wide open space. You really need map control before you're aggressively taking that. So more oftentimes uh, players will opt to take the mineral only here at the six or I guess other locations, the mineral only there, mineral only there, I believe, yeah. Because uh, it's a little bit more defensible, especially with this ramp right here. Um, it's kind of a, it's an interesting map, I will, I will say. Um, and a lot of people are, I think a lot of people feel really frustrated by the inverted map in particular and how how often that can provoke more, I guess, aggressive all-in attacks. I don't know. That's kind of my instinct on it, is that people are like, ah, well, when you have two gates, when you have whatever, if you don't, if you don't manage your front door seal, like the game's over effectively. We do see a front door seal being placed. I'm just going to say Arthur Fleck this time to keep it easy for my brain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the bunker, um, or sorry, the barracks to the north. In the meantime, we have extractor spawning pool, and I believe this, I should have paid more attention. Um, I think this is an 11 hatch. Might have been a 9 hatch, uh, actually. But spawning pool and extractor coming off of it. It looks like Sheep is going to be scouting the third base last, so he's not going to have the advantage of scouting information. We do have uh, the refinery up behind this. I think last game I'm like, ah, the refinery is uh, indicative of mech play, and that's uh, incorrect. Just was off on timings with all this. A little bit of annoyance there from Arthur Fleck, and we'll see if Sheep goes for that two hatch play once again. One thing with that two hatch play, I got to say, um, for foreigners, people that aren't playing on ne necessarily the best internet connection, Mutalisks are so dependent on having decent turn rate, and I believe. I'm not sure if these two players are what kind of lag they're playing in. Barrick's actually floating out. Is it going to try to land on the exterior? Interesting. So uh, I believe this play was is because the Marines pop out of the bottom right, and so he wanted to make sure the first Marine was here. And so he's going to go ahead and play. It looks like it might just be one Marine. Oh, we are seeing a factory behind this. <laughs> Previously, I'm like, oh, yeah, sometimes it's indicative of a factory. This not. This time, uh, we aren't seeing, uh, seeing factory play behind this. This Overlord is going to spot that, though. And I think seeing that barracks pausing marine production for a moment might be um, a big indicator of that. Arthur Fleck also trying to save up resources. SCV getting chased down. We do have that two hatch layer play from Sheep on the opposite corner. Zergling speed also being upgraded. I feel like on other maps, sometimes it's okay to skip Zergling speed. I feel like on this map, again, because of the opportunity for front door buses and whatnot, you gotta, gotta have the Zergling speed. Usually you always want Zergling speed. It's just like when you get it. I don't know. Having a weird moment of thought of zergling speed and its implications in the zerg matchup drone going for the kill battle drone gets the kill at the natural overlord st and this is the critical thing for sheep is just noticing that this barracks is remaining silent command center up we do have the first two vultures being built is is it going to be a response so we see a spire but really we're going to need a sutton colony down for sheep and i don't see any indication towards the sutton colony just yet a second extractor being plopped down which suggests this is going to be a heavier two hatch mutalisk play but these vultures are going to be critical and it looks like arthur flex actually waiting for a third vulture before sending a uh, troop before going out for those uh for that attack and that second command center is going to be in position so this is going to, okay there's the creek colony and now it's morphing to sunken so getting a good indication of this perhaps just now spotting that front door and the lack of marines but the vultures are going to be on the way this is going to be critical that sheep get some sort of blockade one thing is is this and it looks like that hatchery did go down. That's actually critical. Because getting that hatchery down before the drone gets wiped out uh, 
can be the difference for of, of several, like a minute sometimes, and getting your actual hatchery, third hatchery, in place. This is only two Zerglings to defend the front. Drones might need to be pulled to block these Vultures out. And again, keep in mind, inverted ramp advantage. So the Vultures moving up. The Zerglings, are they going to get there? One Zergling trying to create a blockade. The first set, and yeah, the drone's just not there in time. So now the drone's trying to evacuate to the natural expansion, already eating some damage, trying to box out these Vultures. But this is a lot of mining time and a lot of drones that are getting picked off. A decent defense thus far from sheep but now the drones exiting but this is a lot of kills down to 20 drones we do have mutalisks being built do we have anti-air on the opposite quarter an engineering bay now being built there is an armory up but there's there aren't a lot of goliaths to deal with this so this might be a small mercy here from arthur fleck he's got to dance these vultures around for a bit of time because again if he doesn't get if he doesn't buy himself some time to get some sort of anti-air, these mutalisks are going to be a nightmare in his main. Assuming Sheep just repositions there. So four mutalisks out in the air. There's only two marines to defend. The engineering bay is not yet finished. Yes, there's binding. Yes, there's an economic advantage. But that could be a quick shift. One goliath on the ground. Char and booster is going to be finished upgrade. But this, if, if Sheep can rebuild his economy or can just pump that economy really rapidly and continue to produce mutalisks. He might just be able to overwhelm what's on the ground. He needs to move rapidly, though. Four mutalisks waiting for that missile turret. One missile turret down. Now starting to poke in. That marine pressing forward. That marine's not long for life. It's just trying to, again, buy time. One, another turret down. Single goliath. Two goliaths now up in position. This engineering bay can also spot that overlord. But the mutalisks in this grouping, if they just play map positioning. The Goliaths can't be everywhere at once. Unfortunately, they're flying right over the Goliaths currently and eating a lot of damage. And this is going to be four Goliaths plus the reinforcements being spawned right on top of the Mutalist's engagement point. So a bit of counter damage done, but that Overlord was lost to Goliath over that edge. So Sheep is going to go ahead and back off. So losing this Overlord, that's going to cap things. It looks like some additional turrets are down. So Arthur Fleck took a bit of economic damage and the question is now who took more damage in the early exchanges and I believe sheep took more damage he's just sitting at 19 drones currently waiting to get an additional overlord up the goliath count is continuing to grow it looks like sheep just wants to this is one approach to trying to deal with mech play is try to crush that goliath count before they have sufficient numbers and just continually do economic damage this is eight mulas several of them are heavily damaged Diving into the main now. Looks like that turret not yet finished. Continuing to try to pick off SCVs and actually having a lot of success doing so. The Goliaths pushing out the SCVs cowering in the corner. And it looks like no additional Mulisks being... Well, maybe. A lot of additional Mulisks being produced. I take that back. So there's going to be a regrouping and an additional attempt. However, that Goliath count continues to grow. Looks like we, I see at least five and additional being produced. One on the low ground. Looks like two right here. Charm booster is there. Weapons one, or sorry, armor one on the way. But weapons one for the Mutalisk is being upgraded as well. So this is just going to be pure macro versus macro. And then micro versus micro. And positioning is going to be critical. I don't like Sheep's engagement where he keeps floating over this high ground. Running into the bulk of Goliaths. Running into spa new spawning Goliaths. And the Goliath count is growing. This has not been mitigated at this stage. So as far as Sheep's approach to it, he hasn't really crushed the Goliath count, which means he needs to keep up a stronger economy comparatively, and he's just sitting at 24 drones. Let's see if he can continue to macro this. The Mutalist's not fully grouped. It looks like he's going to... Yeah, see... Oh, flying over the high ground. One Mutalist down. The rest really softening up as they're flying over. And there are three turrets here to group, and it looks like he's just... Yeah, he took out two SCVs, but lost a lot of health simultaneously. And honestly, I don't know who's ahead at this stage. Because with all of those attacks, with a lot of those kills, there's only 23 SCVs left on Arthur Flex's side of the map. But these Mutalists are very, very weak, and this is a lot of Goliaths that are starting to march forward. And there's only a single Sunken Colony to try to defend the rest of this. So Arthur Fleck now pushing out. That's also going to stop Sheep's ability to really harass the main. Because if he goes for the main, he will end up losing his base at this stage of things. The second Creep Colony being dropped. The Goliaths also picking up an overlord along the way and I worry for sheep's ability to repel this Goliath attack now one critical thing on the opposite side of the match though is if these Goliaths do get repelled Arthur Flex is going to be in a desperate situation 
With mech, you need to win early and just have overwhelming forces and otherwise, because mech is expensive. It's not the quick replenishing unit count like the medic marines. The Goliath gathering up looks like more than a full control group at the natural expansion. The Mutalist delayed. Sunken Colony has been wiped out. Arthur Fleck not fully backing out of this Sunken Colony. It looks like the Mutalist is diving overhead. Several Goliaths have been picked off, and it looks like it just might be overwhelming Mutalisks, wiping out what's left of the Goliaths. And now Arthur Fleck with a remaining 10 Mutalisks and more coming, going to start engaging the main of Arthur, Arthur Fleck once again. So engaging over that Sunken Colony, not backing out afterwards and just having an overwhelming amount of mutalisks overhead and i think there was also a bit of a goliath miss micro as the goliaths were having trouble focus firing and also in the, the midst of the stutter step not getting several attacks off and that's critical because even individual attacks is are are huge it's, they pack a punch and so they need to get those shots off the mules once again diving again getting weakened so match might not be over yet because the Mutalist just going across, not really getting a lot of damage, and just having a lot of health ripped out of them. Another SEV moving out to go ahead and scout. We do have two Sunken Colonies here at the third. So both players kind of regrouping. However, in this regroup, I got to give an advantage to Sheep overall. Because he can, if he can just keep that macro up, it's up to Arthur Fleck to expand and keep his economy rolling. He does have a, star, a starport up. He does have a science facility up to potentially get mutalisks, or sorry, to potentially get a radiate to really neutralize mutalisks in the mid game. He's moving out with another grouping of Goliaths to maybe take a second shot at this front door and SCV alongside to go ahead and provide repairs. And are we going to see a sneaky expansion out here? Arthur Fleck is going to have, he doesn't have anything. Well, he has some turrets. To potentially deal with this might end up losing the science vessel depending on the timing of it the mutalist moving up it looks like they're going to pick off additional scvs the goliaths i think should ignore this it looks like they're trying to move back but i think this is the moment actually where it might have been beneficial for arthur fleck to just move out and start pushing on one of these additional bases while these while reinforcements deal with this and it looks like now he's making that decision he's going to catch another overlord out in the front let's see if this draws those mutalists back the mutalists are disengaging at this stage the Goliath somewhat disjointed. This is another problem uh, with this sort of attack. This is you do need those Goliaths uh, cohesive and grouped. Single Overlord over that high ground. I'm not sure if the, he should even bother with that one. It looks like he's not going to. He's re-engaging, moving across. The Mutalisks actually have a decent amount of health, and there's more Mutalisks to greet this. Also, a decent SimCity here. Hydralis Den with speed being upgraded and Evolution Chamber underneath. So attempt two from Arthur Fleck. Is it going to be better micro, or with the upgrade, is it going to be able to to punch through this time? There's only a single sunken colony this time. It does have a peck of damage, but we do have a science vessel to potentially push back. Mutalus at least with a bit of a threat. The Mutalus is not there to engage this initial round of Goliaths as those, as those sunken colonies are coming out. And now the Mutalus diving in, but this is a huge amount of Mutalus, and Radiate is in the middle of them as well, and that Radiate might be the difference. A second of Radiate dropped... And it looks like, yeah, that's going to be GG from Sheep. Well played by Arthur Fleck. He is going to move to the final match. And for a second there, I thought Sheep was going to be able to pull it out. Unfortunately, comparative to the previous match with Keen, with the irradiates that were dropped, he did not uh, unspread his mutalisks. And as a result, that irradiate just sitting in that huge bunch of mutalisks doing the double damage with the Goliaths underneath. Otherwise, I'm wondering if he actually had enough mutalists to punch through what was left. I also would have loved to see some Zerglings or things underneath. But anyway, Arthur Flex stays alive. He's going to move to the final match where we're going to see Exit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.